Hello there everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. Today is Wednesday, March 9th. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thank you for being here with me for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. This is where we bring you the stories that matter most to you, the stories that you are clicking on, reading, and sharing from our website and our app. We'll start off with disturbing news out of Ukraine. We all know that terrible things have been happening in Ukraine as Russia continues its invasion. And we're hearing today from Ukrainian officials that Russians have actually attacked a maternity hospital in Ukraine in the city, the port city of Maripol. That's what we're learning from officials. President Vladimir Zelensky wrote on Twitter that people and children were under the wreckage of the hospital and he called it an absolute atrocity. Authorities said they were trying to figure out how many people had been killed or wounded, but video shared by the president of Ukraine showed the hallways, which are usually painted brightly in cheery colors. They were twisted with metal. Room after room had blown out windows, and the floors were covered in wreckage in that maternity ward. Citizens have been trying to escape shelling on the outskirts of Kiev and have been heading actually toward the capital to try and avoid that. Meanwhile, authorities have announced that there has supposed to have been another ceasefire today to allow thousands of civilians to escape from the towns around Kyiv and other cities. But previous attempts at these evacuation corridors have failed. Ukrainians say because of Russian attacks. But Russian President Vladimir Putin said in a phone call with Germany's chancellor that militant Ukrainian nationalists have actually been hindering the evacuations. That's the word from Russia. Now this is coming as Western allies are warning that Russia's attacks could become more brutal and more indiscriminate, potentially targeting other defenseless people. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson tweeted this, saying there are a few things more depraved than targeting the vulnerable and defenseless, and he said that Putin would be held to account for his terrible crimes. Now, back home here in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine is calling for a summit for Northeast Ohio to prepare for the possibility that Ukrainians might resettle here in the area. This is, of course, as those attacks, as we just talked about, continue against Ukraine by Russia. So yesterday he announced he's directed the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services to put a summit together in Northeast Ohio to figure out what services might be necessary and how the state could prepare if, in fact, it is called upon to welcome Ukrainian refugees. So that summit is scheduled for next week, Thursday, March 17th. Organizations that could play a role in the relocation of Ukrainian families will be invited. That includes resettlement agencies, faith-based organizations, charities, and other groups and people that are just interested in supporting Ukrainians. Here's what Governor DeWine said. He said, like many Ohioans, I am disgusted by the senseless aggression of the Russian military and want to support Ukrainian families being driven out of their country. While we do not yet know what role Ohio will play in helping these families, I want us to be prepared when the time does come. Absolutely tragic what's happening in Ukraine. Bringing it back home to what's happening here locally in Northeast Ohio, officials are saying it's probably a space heater that was responsible for killing two infant children in a house fire in Cleveland. That happened yesterday. The Cleveland Fire Department has determined that's the most likely cause of what happened. This was at a home on Jeffries Avenue in Cleveland, an 18-month-old and a one-month-old died as a result of the fire. Now, three other children, the oldest of which was 14 years old, were actually able to escape the house. Another living at the house was at school during the time of the fire. Now, the three children who escaped were taken to Marymount Hospital along with their mother. Their mother was not home at the time of the fire. Absolute tragedy happening here in Cleveland as well. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health. In the last day, so as of right now, there are 729 people currently hospitalized being treated for COVID-19. That's down from yesterday, down a small number, but down from yesterday. And out of those people, 147 are being treated in the ICU. The total number of people who have died in Ohio related to COVID-19 is now 37,000. 212. And we've seen a slight increase in reported COVID-19 cases to the Ohio Department of Health. Remember, these are not at-home positive tests. We're not seeing that. These are those PCR tests that are happening at those official testing facilities and also at medical facilities. So that number, 829 new cases in the last 24 hours. 
Now we are very excited to have welcomed back our senior health correspondent Monica Robbins this week. This was after her second surgery related to brain tumors. She had had one previously. She came back. She was working. She was getting her MRI. She was getting that checked out. And then they found that there was one that was growing again because they weren't able because of the placement of it to get it all. And it was growing again. And it was pressing, making her very uncomfortable, causing vis vision issues for her and all kinds of things. And she says she's back now and things are going to be different this time. She talked about the physical and emotional struggles of this past surgery. You know, we said goodbye to her in November and she's back this week. We're so excited to have her back. But she said it really was a long road. She was very isolated from family and friends and she said one day finally it was cold out she said it was like 17 degrees outside but still she put on her coat she bundled up she got out the door and that's when things kind of really opened up for her it was a bit of a light bulb moment she said she was physically tired not mentally tired and getting out the door is what pulled her out of that rabbit hole when she was in a tough tough spot dealing with so much and she says she's taken her life back in whatever way she can it's her life and she wants it back that's what she said to herself in that moment when she went on that cold cold five mile walk mind you in 17 degree weather when she got herself out the door that day and she said she's going to do what she has to do this time as much as she possibly can to do it right and make her well-being a priority in life because that might save it and she talked yesterday on what's new about how it is possible that stress can cause these tumors to grow. There is at least one study that is suggesting that stress can cause these tumors to grow. And you know, she certainly came back and hit the ground running because when she came back from her first surgery, we had a pandemic and she's the senior health correspondent here. So lots of burning the candle at both ends at that time. Now Monica is committed to a good, solid work-life balance. And that's exactly what we want for her. So happy to have her back in happy that she is making her health and wellness a priority because we don't want we don't want to see her have to go through that again we love that she's back we love that she's recovered and we are happy to see all of the great things she's going to do for us here including reminding everyone to wash your hands i'm sure that's what she would want me to tell you right now at the very least now when you talking back talk about coming back from things it's going to be hard for the bachelor clayton eckard to come back from last night's episode remember ohio university graduate rachel rakia is one of the final three women and this past episode last night wore the overnight fantasy suite dates everything went fine for rachel she had a beautiful date they went up in a helicopter in iceland they went down in an inactive volcano they had a wonderful time they spent the night together at the end of it Clayton told her that he loved her. Actually, before they chose to spend the night together, he told her that he was falling in love with her. And then when he left, he said, I love you, Rachel. Well, the problem is that he also said that to two other women. And one of those women did not take that very well. And it was a huge scene. Clayton blew up at her. Her name is Susie Evans when she expressed concerns over the fact that he had been intimate with two other women. And I'll just say it was not a good look for Clayton Eckerd. So. One way or another, Suze ends up leaving. Rachel, our Ohio girl, is left there with another woman, Gabby. And Clayton, we see in previews for the finale, the two-part finale that's happening next week, we see him telling them that he has told everyone that he loves them, confesses to both of them that he had been intimate with both of them. And from there, it is just, it's, it's total chaos. We don't see exactly how it plays out, but we do see tears from everyone, from Clayton, from the other woman, Gabby, from our Ohio girl, Rachel. It's going to be tough to come back from. We will see what happens as that journey continues. But as of right now, Rachel is still there and potentially could end up engaged to Clayton at the end of this. We will see what happens. What's going to happen next week is Cleveland St. Patrick's Day festivities will be underway. Yes, the parade is coming back this year. And Wallet Hub has ranked Cleveland the number 13 city in the country for celebrating St. Patrick's Day. That is a pretty, pretty high honor. We come in ahead of Henderson, Nevada and Cedar Rapids, Iowa in the top 15 rank, just behind 
New York City, by the way. The number one city is Philadelphia, number two is Boston, three Pittsburgh, four Chicago, and five San Francisco. And then a little further down the line, we've got Cleveland at number 13. So lots of fun to be had next week here in Cleveland for St. Patrick's Day. Here's how Cleveland ranked in some of those subcategories. Fifth for average price of St. Patrick's Day party ticket, 12th for Irish pubs and restaurants per capita, and 16th in St. Patrick's Day parties and festivals per capita. So lots of opportunities to get out there and have a good time if you are Irish like me. And before we let you go here, we do have another holiday coming up. Easter will be here before we know it. And there is an Ohio therapy dog who is among the top 10 finalists to be the next Cadbury bunny. So, you know, in the past couple of years, they've opened this up. You don't have to be a bunny anymore to be the Cadbury bunny and represent them. So Annie Rose is an English doodle from Cincinnati, and she is in the top 10 finalists to be in the annual Easter ad for Cadbury eggs and be the Cadbury bunny. Now, this therapy dog spends her days visiting nursing homes, and during COVID, Annie Rose dressed up and did window visits for residents because they weren't allowed to have visitors. So now she needs your vote to get her in that commercial. Voting is open through March 22nd. We have the link to do that on WKYC.com. She's got some stiff competition, by the way. There's a mini horse from Florida, a hedgehog from Maryland, a bearded dragon from Washington, a cat from Texas, and a llama from New York. The award will be revealed on March 29th, and the winner gets a prize of $5,000. Of course, there's a charity element to this, too. Cadbury will be donating to animal organizations. And, hey, two years ago, a two-legged dog from Ohio by the name of Lieutenant Dan won this competition. So let's bring her back. Let's bring her back to the Buckeye State for Annie Rose. Hopefully she's a winner. Again, you can vote now through March 22nd. That's it for your 3 News Now update today for Wednesday, March 9th. I will see you all back here tomorrow with more 3 News Now.